this is the point at which in five years ago, you'd start talking about the millennials, right? Well, actually, we've been talking about the millennials for so long, they've gotten old. <laughs> and, and I can say that because there's a researcher who has actually proposed dividing the millennials into two parts. One is basically 18 to 26, and the other is 26 to 32 or 33. And the ones over 26, he wants to call senior millennials. <laughs> I love to tell a 26-year-old they're now a senior. That's how fast the future happens. But anyway, it's their younger siblings that are perhaps going to be the biggest challenge to the workplace. Because what we're really seeing now in Generation Z, haven't come up with a better name for them. We generally don't uh, name generations until they get credit cards. Uh, so Generation Z, uh, you know, these are kids who grow up in the virtual world almost from when they can open their eyes. I mean, they've got iPads. Pretty soon they've got cell phones as pacifiers. Uh, there's kid-friendly social networks, kid-friendly virtual worlds. We're struggling with how much they should be in the virtual world, but the fact is in most families, they are in the virtual world quite a bit. And, you know, the behavior of those kids when they grow up it's going to be different than, than uh, the millennials. And I think what we're actually seeing, in, to return to this broad theme of uh, virtualization, what we're seeing is an evolution of the ability to create and maintain meaningful virtual relationships in a way that uh, people who didn't grow up making some of their first friends online really can't understand. But I think that's going to be the hallmark of this generation as they get into the workplace, is that virtual relationships will be very meaningful and, and just as productive in many cases as physical relationships. Now, they still have a lot to worry about in terms of what belongs in the physical world, what belongs in the virtual world in terms of relationships. Um, I do think that by the end of the 20s, there will be virtual marriages in which the couples actually do not want to meet in person ever. It's entirely their avatars uh, that have the wedding, that go on with their married life in some virtual space. Um, people always say, well, what about the kids? And I say, well, there's always FedEx. Um, <laughs> what this means is that the workplace itself will become increasingly virtual. And that's a trend we're seeing now. But again, it's going to happen even faster than we think. Um, it's going to be driven by a few things. Even though there's still some doubt, you know, every once in a while a big company, Yahoo or IBM, decides, OK, we're going to bring everybody back into the office, that's, that's just temporary. It's very clear that distributed work, for a variety of reasons, is going to be very powerful. For starters, you know, the kids that we really want to work for us as we get out there another 10 years are going to actually want a really good reason that they have to get in a car and drive for 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour to sit in a cubicle and text an IM and use video when they could easily do that at home or at some interim sort of suburban teleport that connects to the headquarters at home. So ultimately, we're going to see, I think, the step past telepresence. Telepresence, of course, is the video conferencing on steroids that we're starting to see. High definition screens, localized audio, you know, and these are expensive, sort of. You can get an entire um, telepresence conference room. And it's surprisingly good, the sort of effect that you get. But I'm already seeing people experimenting, because remember, bandwidth is going to be really cheap, really powerful, and screens are going to be cheap. I'm seeing people experimenting with what's called ambient telepresence, where you literally devote a wall in the office to one giant screen. And on that screen is another office, maybe 5,000 miles away. Um, I've seen an experiment like this actually in Silicon Valley, where they hooked up with an office in uh, Portland. And it was the coffee lounges that were connected. You'd walk into the coffee lounge in, in Palo Alto, and ordinary coffee lounge, table, chairs, et cetera, and then one giant video screen and an identical coffee lounge, the coffee lounge in Oregon. Um, and the walls were painted the same color, so it actually seemed to sort of flow together. You'd walk out, you'd talk to your 
colleague uh, to have an ordinary sort of, you know, water cooler conversation and then go back to your office. Um, that's going to be actually replicated more and more. You know, some days I think that out, say, the 50s or so, there will be trivia contests about the distant past. And one of the questions will be, what was a rush hour? And the kids will say, hmm, don't know, haven't heard of that. We explain it to them and they'll go, wait a minute. Everybody got up at the same time, got in their cars at the same time, and drove in the same direction? That's nuts. <laughs> and it is.